Okay, Wei Feng. Thank you, and uh, thank you for including the paper in this um, conference. Um, my name is Wei Feng Zhong. I'm with the Makeda Center uh, at George Mason University. And the paper I'm going to present today is joint work with Julian Chen from Base Y, who's uh, also sitting uh, way in the back. Uh, ah, there we go. OK. So what we are trying to do is to build a machine learning program to process. Um, China has a uh, Chinese version of Pravda called the People's Daily. And so we're going to build a machine to process all those words and figure out uh, in a very short summary what President Xi Jinping is up to. And, <laughs> and so the reason we started this is, you know, China has been all over the news uh, you know, all the time, especially in recent years. And as Steve pointed out at lunch today, right, so they have been trying to build up their, their AI capabilities and deploy this to all kinds of purposes, and uh, at times violating privacy and um, uh, civil rights and all that. And so uh, a few years ago, we got this um, full text of the People's Daily, which, is, uh, which has about 2 million uh, articles. And then we were thinking, you know, what, what can we do? Uh, and then, and then the thought is that, you know, since they are spying on us, right, so let's see whether we can spy on them too <laughs> by using their words. Uh, so this is how we uh, got started. Uh, let's see which should I press. Uh, now, you might think that, you know, this is propaganda, right? Who cares about propaganda? Who believes it? Um, actually, there's, uh, it's hugely informative in an in a w- unusual way because China, just like the Soviet Union, had, uh, has been following this paradigm of uh, Soviet propaganda in which they would typically change their words before changing their actions. I, uh, in fact, Lenin said over 100 years ago uh, that the whole point of having a communist party is to be able to convince the public. Convince them what? Convince them of the policies that you want to pursue later so that the, the entire society moves together. Right? Now, uh, the people study is at the center of China's propaganda machine. And so, because of the logic, if, there, if there's a way to figure out when they're changing their words, we'll be effectively predicting uh, the change uh, in their action. And this is where we, we come in because analyzing propaganda used to be very difficult. Right? You might even wonder whether you need to watch how uh, President Xi holds his uh, teacup and you know, all those tiny you know, cues. So we are going to take the words um, of the People's Daily and see what we can extract from this propaganda newspaper. We did two projects. Uh, the first one is uh, the one in, uh, included in, the, in this conference. But uh, just this in the past month, we did the second one on Hong Kong. So, so I'm going to briefly talk about that too. So they share, so uh, both projects, they share the same data source. In the first one, we try to predict Chinese, uh, the major policy moves in China on, on a quarterly basis going forward. And in the second project, we are doing a daily index telling us how close Hong Kong is from a Tiananmen-style crackdown. Um, so let's jump in. There are other applications which I'll mention uh, later. So the first one, uh, what we are going to do is we take all the articles since, uh, so the, uh, the newspaper started in 1946, so we are going to take all these articles and produce, this is all the information we, we need. This is the, uh, the only input to the program and then we generate this quarterly index. So the way we do this is to say, let's say you want to predict uh, one quarter. We are going to take five years of article leading up to that quarter. So it, on the scale is about tens of thousands of uh, articles. We are going to train something called a front page classifier. So when an uh, article comes in, the machine will be able to tell whether it's on the front page. Two reasons to select this, quite, uh, to, to, to do this. One is that it's a metadata variable already in the data sets, right? So we don't need to collect labels. But more importantly, uh, the front page is a very prominent space uh, and is a very good proxy for what is considered important by the Communist Party. Now, after you have figured out, we use uh, recurrent neural networks to train the model. So once you have this function, we are going to deploy that to the, to the quarter that comes after. Now, what would happen? How well would you do? It depends on actually what happens in the next quarter, right? Because if things are same old, same old, you should get the similar performance. But to paraphrase from earlier this uh, afternoon, if the performance sucks, right, it must imply that the, da- uh, the underlying data generating process is different in a new quarter than, than the previous five years, right? So 
with that, uh, when you take the difference in, two, in the two performances, this is just like as a student, you study for the exam, and then you actually take the exam, and then it turns out your grade uh, is not that good. Then you figure out you know, something is uh, going on. So we, we did that, and so we, we rolled the window forward, and this is how we got the picture going all the way from 1951 to the most uh, recent quarter, the Q2 of 2019. Now, uh, I don't have time to go through all the events. Basically, the, the way to understand this picture is that the higher the index is, it means that the more unusual the quarter right there is compared to the previous five years, right? And so, and all these words, the gray bars are the actual policy change, uh, for policy changes or actual important events considered by uh, China experts in the literature as important. And so a success would be, for example, if I could uh, stand over here. So you see a, a huge jump here in around 2004. So a year after that, uh, the former uh, president, Hu Jintang, had this harmonious society thing in which uh, he drastically slowed slow down the reform in China. Uh, so for example, before that, they, they were, they were saying, you know, state-owned enterprises should be privatized, you know, pro-market reforms are good. Those, those were on the front page until 2004. And then after 2004, instead they put on the front page uh, issues like, oh, you know, there are so, a lot of social problems and we need to help those who lost out from the reform. And state-owned enterprises, they're actually awesome. And, and so we detected a change in 2004. And over a year later, the major policy changes happened. And so this is the way uh, it could have the predictive power. Now, so going forward, we don't have the literature, right? So, for example, here we have two ticks and upticks in uh, Q1 of 2018 and then 2019. And how do we, how do we figure out what, you know, how to use that, right? Actually, you could if you read the articles that are misclassified because when an article unexpectedly comes on the front page, you know uh, it's a new topic. So this is how I'm going to jump over this slide, but if you do the analysis in the first two quarters, you, you know that China has been taking a more and more hotline positions, not only domestically, but internationally. And this is why, uh, since the beginning of the year, Julian and I have been writing, saying that the uh, uh, trade deal is not very likely, so don't get too excited. And we were saying that even when the Wall Street was expecting something to happen in April. Uh, I'm going to very quickly go through a second project uh, on Hong Kong. Um, so we. We do this uh, similar exercise, but he, this time we, we collect about four, over 400 articles on, uh, which are about the Tiananmen Square protests and also protests in the modern day Hong Kong. And then uh, what we are trying to do is to say, let's train a date classifier in, in, uh, instead of front page classifier using the Tiananmen uh, articles, right? So each, day that, uh, each article comes in, we'll be able to tell you know, which date it falls on leading up to June 4th uh, crackdown on the square. But then we are going to deploy this uh, model to the Hong Kong articles. So it, it would definitely suck because all the current dates will be thrown all the way back to 1989. But this is exactly what we want because all the present day will be thrown back to the counterfactual timeline on Tiananmen Square. And this is how you can see we got really close on August 5th because it reached uh, June 1st. And oh, by the way, uh, we are going to do a daily update, uh, quarterly update for PCI China and daily update for the crackdown. So uh, in case you get nervous, uh, you can check out our update. There are many uh, potential applications simply because of the fact that we are basically using a metadata variable that's very easily available to extract um, useful information. And so let me end with the commercial and saying that everything is online because we want it to be as transparent as possible. Updates will be on the website. Uh, feel free to sign up to our newsletter. And if you are interested, please use our code. Thank you.